how high that water is. There is nothing I can do. Just nothing I can do. Hey, I'm Chris Up from Make Everything, and today we're gonna to talk about my desperate attempt to literally keep my shop above water. This was a tough one. Check it out. All right, so here we are outside my shop, and you've probably seen this driveway if you've watched any of my other videos, um, but I never really talk so much about the location of the space here on YouTube. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, which you can check out right here, you know about my flooding problems. Um, so once we hit hurricane season here in New York, things just go bad for me. My shop is in the lower level of a larger building, and the way that the surrounding properties sort of situate, I get a lot of water down here uh, at the bottom of the shop. Now, when I first moved in and when I first signed the lease here, I had no idea that this place flooded. Um, I didn't find out until about a month into the build out of this shop when we had a heavy rain and I came in and the place was filthy. All this dirt and rainwater had washed in under the doors and I had no idea what happened. I thought there was a, a water leak. I really couldn't identify the problem. So that was five years ago. In those five years, I've done a million different things to try to reduce the amount of water that gets inside. And I've come to sort of the realization that there is no stopping the water from getting in. It's really just managing how much gets in. So prior to making this video, I was in the process of making another video talking about the flood prevention that I thought was going to be the end all be all. I had bought a big pump and figured out a way that I could remove any amount of water from the driveway. And then Hurricane Ida came and came through New York, putting down more rain than this area has ever seen, ever. The town that I'm in got nine and a half inches of rain and it didn't stop for probably three or four hours. So let's rewind and I'll show you the flood prevention that I had started, and then we'll get into what actually happened the night of the big storm. All right, so for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you know about the issues that I have at this shop. So the way that my driveway is graded and the way that my building is situated, when it rains hard and we get big storms, my shop floods. When I first moved in, we thought the floors were brown because it's so much dirt and sediment had ran into the shop over the previous seven years before I moved in that you couldn't see the color of the floors. Um, I learned very quickly that this shop has water issues, but we just sort of got the driveway fixed. We put in a new catch basin and for the first probably year, we didn't have any problems. Slowly over time, the problems, I wouldn't say they've gotten worse, but as we get these crazy storms here in New York and in the Northeast, sometimes it's really bad. Case in point, right here. This is bad. This is bad. So that storm was about a month and a half ago and we got some water in the shop, but wasn't terrible. A couple weeks after that, we had a storm in the middle of the night and that one was much worse. I can't, I don't know, I can't keep the water out. Oh, please stop raining soon. So I'm recording this video and I'm doing all this work the day before a hurricane is supposed to strike my area and I'm just sick and tired of dealing with pumping water out of my shop and the stress that comes along with it. So aside from the two pumps that I already have outside in my catch basin, which I'm gonna show you, I bought this guy. This is a one horsepower, three inch discharge pump. I got it on Amazon. It was about $600 and I bought a bunch of stuff to go along with it, hose and adapters and connectors. And I'm gonna set this up and hopefully it helps me get through tomorrow. So this pump has a three inch threaded discharge, which works with these aluminum threaded fittings and also can work with a PVC sanitary fitting like you've got here. Now this 45 degree uh, can be good in some cases, but for me, I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be the right thing. Um, normally I would put this in a catch basin, but because I don't have enough time to fully situate this thing, I'm gonna leave this on top of the sewer drain cap in case the water rises above it. This thing will suck about an inch of water. Um, and sometimes when the flooding gets really, really bad, we have probably eight to 10 inches of water outside. 
So my thought here is by leaving this outside of the catch basin, this will be my backup absolute emergency pump, which I can kick on either with power or if we lose power, hopefully with the generator to, uh, to get me in the clear. So what I'm thinking is I wanna make an adapter here that will go out of this 45 degree fitting and then get me back parallel with the ground. So I have this threaded coupling here and then I have this PVC street elbow, which will come out like this. And then I can put another male thread on the end, which essentially is just extending this thread. And then I can start threading my aluminum fittings into this. I'm using these really cool cam lock fittings, which will go onto the hose once I cut it down. And these will allow me to very easily lock and unlock and change the setup on this. What's also nice is I'll be able to eventually rotate this thing off once it's glued. And then I can just thread directly onto the pump. So with this glue setting up, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to lay out my hoses. All right. So this is the hose that I got. This is three inch lay flat PVC. And it's, I think I got a hundred feet when I bought it. And it's a great hose. The problem is it's so heavy that I think I want to break it down into a couple of different sections. So I'm going to roll it out from the catch basin and maybe break it down into two hoses so that it's easier to manage. Each individual um, one of these will be a lot easier to manage than dealing with them super long 100 foot hose. When this thing fills with water, the column of water is so heavy, you just can't move it. So now I've got those, those hoses split up and on these little wooden bars actually helped a lot. And by rolling the hose from the center makes it really easy to manage these. I've got all these adaptive fittings. So this is a cam lock hose fitting. This is something new I've never used before, but it's pretty simple. You've got a rubber washer in there and then you push this on and then by pushing down on these two cams, it forces this fitting to make a really tight connection. And then those are locked together. Um, these are cast aluminum. These were less expensive than the cast stainless steel, obviously. Uh, but I think they're gonna be fine for my purposes. So I need to put an, a female and a male end on uh, each side of this hose. And I've got these stainless steel hose clamps, which should do the trick to keep this all cinched down. All right, so with these hoses done, oh. I can sort of put them together, keep the water in them. I noticed that if you don't flip down these cams evenly, usually only one will lock. So they give a really nice positive fit. I think they're gonna be great. Um, so now with these done, I'm kind of ready to go. In case I lose power during this hurricane, I need to be able to run this pump. And I have a 3,200 watt, uh, 4,000 peak watt generator that I just don't know if, if it'll do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up and I'm gonna put this pump in a garbage pail, fill the garbage pail with water, see what happens. Um, make sure that with the pump plugged into the generator that I can generate enough power to get this thing to go. That's tight enough. So yeah, I wanna make sure that this is gonna work with my generator. So let's get the generator outside and in some sort of a bucket, we'll fill it up and give it a shot. We're gonna try filling this up. So this bin should hold about 40 gallons when it's full. Um, this thing is supposed to pump 
at 61 gallons a minute. So it should take less than a minute to empty this. I don't know, we'll see. It's almost full. I might just even leave the water on. I'll turn the generator on now. All right, generator's still going. All right, so the first part of this video was filmed during one impending hurricane. Now this is filmed during the second. It's about a week later. Hurricane Ida has just destroyed a lot of Louisiana and that rain is coming up here. Um, I saw when I was watching the storm prep that they were doing down in, the, in, in uh, Louisiana that they sort of did something like this where they had like plastic along a wall and then sandbags at the base. I guess to act as sort of a barrier for the rain. So I'm going to try that um, because we may get five to six inches of rain and it's going to rain for almost two full days. And that could be enough to just inundate me with water. So it's worth a try. Well, now we're in the shop. Um, the hurricane is about to sort of start making its way over uh, where I'm at on Long Island. So uh, it's about 7.30 p.m. and the storm is supposed to hit between midnight and around 5 a.m. this morning. So what I did here was I set up these flood barriers inside. Now these are the uh, quick dam flood barriers. I've used these before when I first moved into the shop. Uh, these are these like activated flood barriers. So they get filled with water and then they get bigger um, and then they act as a barrier. And they actually work pretty good but they deteriorate over time so I've had to buy these probably like 
over the last five years I've bought them a few times. So that's gonna that's gonna keep me right for in here and then um, in the wood shop because lately the water in the wood shop has been pretty bad. I literally just glued two by fours to the floor. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I'm willing to do to keep from being underwater because it's just, it's so mentally taxing. So, so that's what's going on over there. And then here we are outside. The rain's starting to pick up. I got everything set up. This like immediately filled with water. Try to kick out a, a drain for that. But um, I'm gonna sandbag this rear door shut and I'll get in through the fire fire entrance if I have to. So, with any luck, this is gonna help and we'll get through the night unscathed. Not much else I can do. Let's see how we do. Well, we're in bad shape. Huh. We got a lot of water going into the shop. I got this pump running. The water's all the way up. I got water coming into the machine shop. It's an, un, it's an unbelievable amount of water. I'm standing on the life raft right now. This pump is running. Oh, we just lost power. Now I gotta go get the generator. Oh, uh, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. Well, that's how deep it is. Oh, generator's running, the power keeps kicking off. This is so bad. I don't, I, I got, there's nothing I can do. I can't even open this door. We, we breached the machine shop. We're soaked. I can't even get inside. Oh, this is so bad. Look at how high that water is. This thing's running constant. I can feel full volume pressure in there. That's running off the generator because I don't know if the power is going to stay on. It keeps cutting out. There is nothing I can do. Just nothing I can do. Unbelievable. I'm totally, I'm, I'm, you know, past my ankle. And I think it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's not, it's not slowing down. There's nothing we can do. All right, so up at the street, this pump is putting out a full, I mean, that's a full volume of water. And there's a lot of head pressure, so you can see all three pumps are running basically constantly and then let's go down the driveway look at that water <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable so the water's still rushing in from everywhere um, This thing's going. That That's pumping water out from inside. The water is running around that corner, so I didn't do enough to secure that corner. That's a bummer. Um, we're starting to see the top of the pump now, which you couldn't see. My tent is gone. That's pretty upsetting. I've had this thing for a long time. How are we doing on fuel? And we're almost in a position where I think we can probably open this door soon. I can't even really get close to the pump until the water goes down a little further. So we're just gonna wait and go back inside. So this is the first time this has ever happened. Water is literally rushing in through the machine shop door floor. Um, and this is the machine shop, which was not prepared for this at all because this room has literally never gotten a drop of water in it. Now, 
considering there is about two feet of water outside, this seems actually pretty manageable. So I'll take it, but the generator is running out there. The water is not getting any lower at all. Um, and there's nothing I can do except wait. So the water seems to have at least stopped coming in. So we're gonna start cleaning. Um, and I'll just show you this thing real quick. So this is a, a shop vac pump. So when you fill your shop vac with water, instead of having to go and physically dump this, you just turn on this little pump and it sucks the water out. And if you have a leaky hose, it sprays everywhere, but who cares? This pump is going and this has been evacuating the water in here. Oh. So, so this thing has been sucking up water, which is great. Uh, trying to help clear this out. We're already starting to see the ground over here. <laughs> I mean, we still have so much and this is just crazy. I've never, I, I can't believe this, but whatever. Right, Thomas? Right. Say hello to, say hi to the, to the friends and family here on YouTube. This is my friend Thomas. He's an up and coming blacksmith, knife maker. You'll see him soon. My shop is also underwater. Yeah, his shop's also underwater. It's uh, both submarines. I still can't go outside, but uh, for some context, when, I, when it was really bad, this whole thing was underwater. So now it's not as bad. I think we can open this door, Thomas. What do you think? Just to like get a, get a walk? Take a walk? Let's take a walk. All right. All right, so now being out here on a nice, clear, dry day, you can sort of orient yourself as to the flood videos that I just showed. So this catch basin over here is the lowest point in the driveway. And at one point, the water wound up about five inches above those sandbags. So off the catch basin, we wound up with about 25 or 26 inches of water. And that water filled this entire driveway. It was a huge area. Now during that, as you saw, all three of the pumps were moving and pushing water out to the street. Um, it was just a huge amount of rainwater and there's just no way that I could have been prepared for that amount. Um, but now that it's dry, you can kind of get a, a, an idea of the scale. So what I learned from that experience is that I need to prepare for this whole space to get that amount of water the next time a big storm is coming. Now the tarp systems that I did on these four doors actually worked really well because 25 or 26 inches of water outside this door should have meant 25 or 26 inches of water inside my shop, which would have been catastrophic. Instead, I only had two inches of water inside the metal shop. Uh, the other two shops got wet, but they never got a sustained amount of water. They never got like one or two inches of water. They always only had you know, just sort of a skim and, you know, a lot of stuff got damaged, but nothing was lost. Um, so what I learned is that I need to sort of change the way I did the tarp and sandbags on the wood shop door. And then I need to do it again here on the machine shop. Door. So one of the big problems that happened during that storm and one of the big sort of moments of defeat for me was when I got to the shop, the whole driveway was already flooded and I had sandbagged this door, but I didn't put a tarp in front of it just sort of preventatively. By the time I got here, water was already getting in through those sandbags into the machine shop. This is the highest room. There's a step up into it. So I never even worry about this room flooding. So I got here, I went in through the front of the building, down through the fire escape, and I was just watching the water come in. And I thought, as long as it can stay at this pace, I'll be okay. I came outside to check the pumps, and that's when the power went out. Now I have a generator in the shop, but honestly, I really just didn't think I was gonna need it. Uh, we were just expecting rain, there wasn't gonna be any wind, so I didn't think I would need the generator outside. Unfortunately, I was here by myself. It was about 11 o'clock at night at that point, and I called my buddy Macklin, who's always down to help me, and unfortunately, he was dealing with something else on his own. So I had no choice in that moment but to take away these sandbags and push this door open with about four inches of water above this curb. So I forced the door open from inside and I dragged the generator out, just letting all this water rush into my machine shop, which made me feel just sick to my stomach. 
once I got out here, there was no way for me to put the generator down because the water was so deep. So I desperately grabbed the piece of scrap metal, a broken shelf, put it in the water and then put the generator on top of it and didn't even fit. Um, it was just sort of leaning on there. And I had this moment where I just didn't know what to do. I was by myself. I had shut this door and I could see the water was making it through. The water just kept coming. The rain kept coming. The generator was running. It was vibrating like crazy. It was running the big pump. At that point, the lights had turned back on, but I didn't know how long they were going to last. So while the generator was precariously leaning on this shelf, I just didn't know what to do. I wanted to get inside. I wanted to check on my equipment, make sure everything was safe, but I just couldn't allow the generator to fall into two feet of water. And that would have been that. So while I was standing out here in the rain, I just like stared up and just screamed as loud as I could and out of just desperation. <laughs> while this is all happening, I'm watching my tent start to collapse and the generator keeps moving on this shelf. The water keeps getting higher. I noticed that my neighbor who parks his pickup truck down here had left it. And normally during a storm, he'll take it out. And in that moment, I realized that the only way for me to safely put the generator somewhere that it wouldn't fall was to get it into the bed of his truck. So I wedged the generator kind of on an angle on the shelf. I ran across the water, opened the bed of his truck. And then in this moment of like desperate mother trying to save her children, heaved the generator up into the back of the truck. Um, and I know that there was just pure desperation because I normally can't lift that generator too well. It kills my back and the thing was freshly filled with fuel. So somehow I managed to get into the back of his truck and secure it, which then allowed me to get back into the shop to try to manage the water. But this was a really difficult part of the evening. So once I got the generator situated in the bed of his truck, I was able to run inside and grab a table and get everything situated. And at that point, all I had to do was wait it out. Um, the rain kind of peaked and it started to slow down. I was watching the water just come in through every door. But at that point, um, one of my friends and my brother had showed up and we were pushing the water all into the metal shop with the squeegees. The metal shop is the most often one to flood. So everything in there is sort of prepared for water. I actually keep a pump just right in the middle of the shop to pump out any water that might come in. And obviously this isn't ideal, but at least I'm prepared for water in that room. So by about midnight, the rain was consistent. I knew exactly what was gonna happen. I knew exactly how much water could get in. The generator was safe. It was running outside. It was running the big pump. I couldn't get the water out as fast as it was coming in, but at least it was manageable. So after a few hours of cleaning up, I wound up being here till around 3 a.m., but I wound up getting most of the water out of the shop and while there was some damage, I didn't lose any major pieces of equipment. I lost some wood in the wood shop because I wasn't expecting the water to get in there. And a bunch of things in the metal shop and machine shop got wet. Um, but overall, what I did worked. Um, when I came down here that night, as I walked down the driveway and I saw the amount of rain and I saw the water in my shop, I felt like I had lost this battle. Um, and all this prep that I had done just all fell for nothing. But in hindsight, seeing how much water was outside and how, how little got inside in comparison, I think I did pretty well. Um, I feel like I wasn't beaten and I feel like everything was okay. By the next day, I was able to come here and work. You know, things were a little damp, but I set up fans and, you know, I, uh, I persevered. So that being said, a lot of people in my area uh, all in the Northeast, we're not so lucky. I have friends that lost whole shops. I have friends that lost their houses and apartments and cars. Um, so if you're watching this and you know anybody that was affected by the floods, please you know, find a way to give them something, give them some money or food or whatever they need. I know people with small children that lost everything that the kid had. So you know, uh, try to participate and give back if you can. Um, like I said, if you follow me on Instagram, you know all about this because I've been talking about the flooding here for years and it's almost become just like a running joke. So my friend Jeff Fader came up with the phrase, 
stay dry, don't die. And I've made some stickers and some t-shirts that you can get on my website if you want to uh, buy something and kind of get in on the joke. Um, overall, I feel very lucky that everything was okay here. And I truly feel like the preparation that I did and the money that I spent, because I spent a lot of money on pumps and hoses and flood barriers, it was all worth it. Um, and I think the, the key here uh, and the message, at least that I took away from it, was that it could always be worse. Um, and I'm one to say that pretty often, but in a scenario like this, where so many people, and I'm so thankful for everyone that reached out and asked me if I was okay and checked in on me and, and asked me if I needed help, thank you so much. It means so, so much to me. Um, but, you know, so many people had it worse than I did. So go and help them. Take that same exact energy that you would be willing to give to me and give it to somebody that truly needs help. So thanks so much for watching. This is just a little story about what happened here during Hurricane Ida to sort of fill you guys in. Again, check out the Instagram because that's where the real heavy hitting flood content lives uh, is on my Instagram. But hopefully this is the 100 year storm and things don't continue to get worse with our weather. Um, nine and a half inches of rain in my town is something that I don't think anybody ever could have expected, but we made it out okay. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all of you for supporting me and watching my videos here on YouTube. And thank you for subscribing. Like this video if you enjoyed it. If you have questions or a flood story, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the shop. I've got a ton of projects that I'm in the middle of working on. So these videos will be coming out very soon and a lot of really cool stuff in the works. So again, thanks for watching. Check out my website, buy a shirt, get a sticker, um, and go out and support somebody that lost something in this last big storm because there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who were displaced by the storms that ripped through Louisiana and the Gulf all the way up to New England. So again, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Stay dry.